tragic case of Sasha Johnson. So we last covered Sasha Johnson back in podcast episode 139, and that was in May 2021, after she'd been tragically shot following her involvement in the Has it Black almost Lives. been two years already? It has, it has, yeah. Following her involvement in the Black Lives Matter protest and her furious denouncements at the time of, of white people. Now, um, I'll just remind you that Crime Stoppers currently have a reward of £20,000 available for information pertaining to the uh, the individuals who, who shot her uh, and left her in her current condition, because after two years uh, after her shooting, no witnesses have come forward, uh, despite the fact that she was in a house party at the time with over 30 people in attendance. Um, apparently nobody saw anything. Was it one or two children that she had? Uh, two, I believe, um, that she had. So, yes, this is, this is a tragic story. Now, before I get on to that, I'm just going to refer to uh, an old premium video. This is an oldie but a goodie uh, from Carl. It is the uh, the worst of race critical theory. You can find that on the website. It seems germane to this conversation. So, returning to Sasha, um, just in case you don't remember this this, this case, Sasha was a well-known um, BLM activist during the, uh, the summer of Floyd. Um, let's just remind ourselves... Um, of her, this is a video that we've got of the uh, of the young lady in question. And they say about education, we need a black militia. When I say that, I'm not saying it because I want people to fear and think we're coming violent. What we're saying is, you push, we push. You fight, we fight. Peace is not peace until you recognise our life, and we're not going to lay down no more. I'm not going down on a knee. I'm always going to be ten toes standing, just like my ancestors, ten toes standing. No justice. Peace. No justice. Peace. Take it to the streets. I can't hear you. No justice. No justice. Take it to the streets. Take it to the streets. I ain't scared of no terrorist group. The police is no different from the KKK. They stand around and protect statues and buildings instead of people. They need to join the local council and start a litter pick too. When I say they have a pepper spray, we have our own too. They have smokes, we have it too. Come together, put your fists in the air. Black power! Don't ever be scared to say it. it doesn't mean that you hate another race and anybody that said that you hate them, they too have hidden racism because they're scared of your blackness. Black is beautiful. Black is evident. That's great. So I don't mean to dis besmirch her name given the tragic circumstances she finds herself in, but I will just say that was a complete stream of sludge and sewage just coming from her mouth right there. That was nonsense well, one after the other. I think I've, I, I don't know how far it goes back, but I know the No Justice, No Peace slogan goes at least as far back as the um, Rodney King riots of 1992. The, the No Justice and No Peace is, is sadly a, a, a sort of connecting theme through this segment. Um, but let me just pick on the last element of what she said there. Um, and, I'm, and I'm quoting here from, from Mrs. Johnson. She says, Black Power. Don't ever be scared to say it doesn't mean you hate another race. And anybody who says that you hate them, they have hidden racism because they are scared of your blackness. So that's just Sasha getting on record, clearing up any potential confusion uh, that some people who might have that because she's talking about issues, that that means that she um, has um, you know disrespect or a lack of empathy for another race or even possibly hatred. Towards them. She's just making clear that that is not the case. I'm sorry, just the, the grammar in the sentence, don't ever be scared to say it doesn't mean you hate another race. That's confusing. Yeah, I'm, the, having the, to, I'm having to dissect it the, to understand the, the, what the she actually means. The syntax is a little bit garbled, but you, you, you can un sort of piece these things. So she's just making clear um, that uh, advocations of black power does not mean um, any hatred towards any other race. Also, here is a tweet from Sasha uh, where she says... Um, the white man will not be our equal, but be our slave. These two things don't seem to line up very no, there, well. No, there is some possible confusion between the uh, the, the messaging on, uh, on 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 these two, but um, that was uh, that was what she put out. That was actually the tweet that got her um, banned from Twitter. So there is that at least. I do have to wonder though, Harry, if uh, if if it was you know the other way round, if if a white man had said the same about um, another race. Do you think the constabulary would be knocking on their door? But um wasn't the case here, so she was able to say that on Twitter. And, I, I uh, think you might get the Jan 6 treatment if you tweeted uh, something I, like I, this I the opposite way around. Could, I mean, you have to remember that in in the UK, we're not a free country like Russia, where they only arrest 400 <laughs> people a year uh, for things that they say on social media. In this country, about 8,000 people... Eight, Is 8, that really the difference? Year, yeah. Oh, my goodness. ...are arrested for things that they say on social media. Oh, but, we're being... Um, dunked on on our liberties by the Russians. Yes. 
So, um, uh, so uh, yeah, so, so she, she did not get the police knocking on her door for that uh, tweet, but she did get uh, suspended from Twitter, so I suppose there's a... But it's not just um, white people that she had an issue with. Um, here is a video of her being rather critical of one of the um, many black people who uh, disagree with her stance, and so she resorts to calling them a coon, which I believe is not a term of endearment. Let's have a look at this. Why do you think kneeling on a man's neck for 8 minutes and 46 you see, seconds? Sorry, I'll show you a video there. I'll show you a video there. I'll show you a video there. You just need to shut up, man. Why the f*** is you shut up? Get angry some more and threaten me some more. Get angry and threaten you some more. Yeah. I promise you, I don't threaten you. I promise you. Promise, okay. So come out there. Come let's come live through the promise. Come out there, let's live through the promise. Come on. Come out there, we live through the promise. I can promise you now. Come out there, we live through it. You're a c***. Dude, what? What do you mean? Because I'm a girl, you think I'm going to f*** you up? Come on, man. Because I'm a girl. So, um... Yes, a spirited discussion there. Um, so she was an equal opportunity uh, when it came to uh, to dishing out some uh, opprobrium at people, we shall say. Um, uh, again, uh, an individual... I didn't realise that she uh, debated sa uh, debated Dominique. Yes, Dominique, of course, uh, a friend of the show, sat in this chair many times. Um, they got together on, uh, on, on a uh, podcast, and spoiler alert, they did not get on. Let's have a look at this. So, yes, just in case you didn't catch that. Yeah, I, did, I didn't uh, catch it. D D Dominique was making the argument that perhaps what we should want is good economic policy that benefits everybody, whereas Sasha was basically just saying, you know, I want reparations, I want to get paid. She wants Gibbs. Uh, yes, yes, that was that was essentially her position. And uh, Sasha, while not just arguing against um, white people in general and arguing against um, other black people who she disagreed with, she was also very careful to make sure that she was indoctrinating her children in the in the struggle. Uh, this is her talking to her two boys and presumably two friends of her boys. Power! I can't hear you. Black power! Black power! Black power! Every hour. Every hour. Black power. Black power. My son, what do you say? Freedom is a must. Every hour. They can't hold who? Can't hold your mother. Listen. Every hour. Every hour. Tell you like that now. I have more balls than most of you men out here. No, I do. Isn't it? Tell them. You, you do. What do you? Black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. Yeah, so um, arguing with uh, people on the streets, uh, causing general disruption, making sure her chi uh, uh, kids were being brought into this philosophy of of struggle. I mean, I've got I've got no personal uh, personal issue with people being proud of their heritage no. and their background. No, no, of course not. But the Black Power movement is one that is explicitly violent. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree absolutely. I mean, you, there is there is no reason to be ashamed of your heritage in any way. Well, uh, no, there isn't really, isn't there? No, so, no not so, really. So that, that's perfectly that's perfectly fine. Uh, but uh, she was definitely um, a confrontation orientated individual who took particular exception to uh, to white people. Um, but but she was getting a lot of coverage on um, on Sky News and BBC uh, for this, and she was gaining notoriety. She was indoctrinating her kids into the struggle, um, and then tragedy struck. Uh, let's see what happened next by this clip of the police. This was a shocking incident that's left a young woman with very serious injuries. Our thoughts are with the family of Sasha Johnson, who are being supported by specially trained officers. We have a team of detectives who are working tirelessly to identify who is responsible for this shooting. They're making good progress, but we need members of the public to come forward and help us. From our inquiry so far, we have established that Sasha had been at a party at her house on Consort Road in Peckham, early hours of Sunday morning. Around 3am, a group of four black men dressed in dark clothing entered the garden of the property and discharged a firearm and they left before police arrived. We are aware of Sasha's involvement in the Black Lives Matter movement in the UK. I understand the concern that this will cause some communities. However, at this time, we have no information that indicates that Sasha was the victim of a targeted attack. So this is obviously very sad. Um, you know, Sasha was taken to hospital subsequently following this, and I'm sure she was given, you know, whatever care the, uh, the doctors and nurses at the hospital could give. Um, but um, she she remains in that condition um, on an ongoing basis. So this is, of course, a you know a, a tragedy. Um, this is what she looks like now. This is an article from the Oxford Mail. Um, her injuries um, were quite extensive. Um, so you know that that's her in her prime and um, 
and uh, the images that the family released. There's, there's a more detailed photo slightly further down. Um, it's all very distressing, so 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 trigger warning uh, to anybody who doesn't like uh, distressing images. So and look, unfortunately, yeah. I was just going to say the sad thing is that if it's the people within that community who could, if they do know anything, come forward and give the information that could lead to the arrest of the people who did this, you're not helping anybody yeah. by not coming forward. It may no. it may not be in vogue within that community to do so. Well, this is this is this is precisely my point. So I mean, look, uh, please. Um, I don't want anyone to mistake the tone of this segment. You know, this is a this is a young woman uh, with two children who may never leave that hospital bed um, because she was the victim of black on black violence that is sadly so prominent in Britain's most vibrant cities. This is a genuine tragedy. Um, she fell into a hateful ideology. Um, black Lives Matter uh, received regime support at the time, um, very noticeably, and it's. <laughs> Slightly ironic, given views, uh, you know, Sasha's views on how power structures work. But in the summer of 2020, Black Lives Matter did have full institutional backing. You know, uh, politicians were kneeling, police were being very keen to be seen kneeling, um, corporations were changing their logos to black fists. Um, you had um, sports teams being sort of outright ordered to to kneel before they before they went onto the pitch and and um, you know be, be began their game. You know, Black Lives Matter did have effectively full institutional backing over that period. And and you bring up that she was kind of taken into this radical ideology that led to the views that she held and such. But there are examples of of um, black radicals that did end up when given the chance later on in life to turn themselves around and yes. spread more positive messages. I, I've got um, some, uh, I think Shelby Steele uh, is somebody who back in the 1960s was a black radical who later mm -hmm. on in his life turned his, uh, t turned his life around and turned his mind mm -hmm. around to become somebody. Even Thomas Sowell, we brought him up. He used to be a Marxist before he yeah. started working for the government and then realized, hold up, this doesn't work. Yeah, and, and there, I mean, of course, there were many such examples of people who who have been absorbed into the sort of hateful ideologies that um, that Sasha had, and then have come around and spoken out against it. And I think she would have been quite an elegant um, advocate had she have made that transition, um, which, of course, is is probably now going to be you know denied of her. She'll never have the chance. No, but uh, you know, the, you know, the, this this is the thing: the regime they pick a controversial issue like this. And they use it to divide the population. And in, in the summer of 2020, it was Black Lives Matter. That was the thing that was being used to divide everybody. And very effective it was in that case as well. Um, and of course, you know, people who said things like all lives matter were demonised as being hateful. Um, you know, a year later, it was it was now the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated. That was the dividing line that the regime was was pushing against people. Fast forward another year, and it was between you know those good people who want to sexually mutilate children and um, have men in bikinis rub themselves up against children while singing at them, um, against those hateful people like us who think that that is perhaps a bit iffy. Um, and then, of course, the current division that is being pushed on us is all those um, fine and decent people who demand that World War Three should begin immediately, nuclear holocaust be damned, and those of us who think that perhaps peace and negotiation is worth being given a try. So, you know, what are you, some Putin apologist? Well. I, there, there are arguments there. So, <laughs> oh, goodness. But, but actually, you know, the, the, the real aspect of this story is the story that isn't. The reason why I've decided to cover it, you know, I'm covering this, sort of resurrecting it more or less out of the blue, um, is because of the story that we're not telling. Based on the timeline, um, about now, we should be getting headlines that read something like this. Um, five British men jailed for the shooting of Sasha Johnson that left prominent BLM activist um, in critical condition. We're not seeing those headlines. Why are we not seeing those headlines? Why is why is Sasha Johnson not back in the news around about now? Well, the answer is, it's because, as I hinted at earlier, um, the case is uh, she was attending a house party. Um, five young black men burst in, started firing guns. There were 30 people present and not one of them apparently saw anything. So are they It'd just be like that sometimes. Yeah. So basically, the the the, prosecu the prosecution case had to be dropped against them. So I mean, they the, the police initially must have been able to um, get some information because they were arrested very shortly afterwards. 
but when it came to building a, a case that would stand up in court, they, they, you know, the people at that party realized that they didn't know anything. And apparently no one else in the region, no, none of our other friends, no, nobody actually knew anything, it turns out. Um, and so the, the prosecution case was dropped and these five guys have been formally declared not guilty. Brilliant. Yeah. Just the system at work right there. Well, you know, and, and look, I've, I've got to ask the question, what on earth is going on here? Um, is this normal? And I'm going to I'm gonna uh, quote a bit from um, the Sunday Telegraph who, who had a look at this because what the Sunday Telegraph did is they did an investigation. They um, did uh, freedom of information requests to the Metropolitan Police looking at um, the effect of race on crime. Um, and they discovered that um, the majority of um, violent crimes in our cities like London um, were um, perpetrated by, by young black men. They realised that fifty four percent of street crimes uh, were committed by by young black men, um, and fifty eight percent of robberies and sixty seven percent of of gun crime. Um, the Sunday um, Telegraph article goes on to explain that even though that um, um, uh, black men are arrested at a significantly higher rate uh, proportionally, um, the charge rate, so the so the the, uh, the, the, the uh, following conviction rate is actually quite low. Now, um, Simon Woolley of the Sun of Sunday Telegraph, he points out that he thinks that this is because um, it illustrates um, unfairness in the system. Well, perhaps, Simon, it is unfairness in the system. Perhaps it is because of exactly what we've highlighted in this case, is that certainly people experience amnesia uh, when it comes to identifying the sort of um, criminal element within the community. Um, and, and that is the thing that it is, is, is sort of blighting us here. Uh, further, when looking into this, I then went and looked at a Harvard paper on policing perspectives because I wanted to find out what the, uh, what the fashionable take on this is. Now, um, they looked at it and they said that um, black on black violence has been criticised for um, perpetuating the racial stereotype of violent black people. Uh, and that was why it is something that we should not talk about. Um, they said that black on black crime is inaccurate and vague and generally offensive. So, who who is it more generally offensive to the the general public or the actual victims of these crimes? Well, I you know, and, and you know that, that that is precisely the issue here. Um, you know, so I you know I guess that's it. Um, sorry, Sasha. I mean, at, at the end of the day, she had kids. Yeah, she she had kids that are going to grow up without yeah. a mother. When we talk in the previous segment about mm. children being killed, and it seems that uh, mm. more of them are black children than white children, those those kids have got yeah. mothers. Those kids have got mothers who are going to be absolutely devastated and, by and, what and, happens. And who knows what Sasha um, could be advocating with the, with the benefit of, of further experience and hindsight. So you look, sorry, Sasha, that you know I've, I've picked up your story, but I don't think anyone else will be doing it for for a long time. Um, you know, we, it is difficult to know what you think as you lie there in hospital, um, communicating at best with a sort of a, a, a nod or, or, or a sort of a blink at uh, your loved ones. Uh, and I'm sorry that we're not supposed to talk about your case because, um, unfortunately, what your case illustrates is that there is a vast yawning difference between the narrative um, that receives, or at least used to receive, institutional support, the, the narrative of, of Black Lives Matter, um, and the, um, the unfortunate facts of... Um, cities like London that show that um, actually black on black violence is is a significant problem and it's um, simply not being talked about black on white violence that is getting talked about at the moment because Scott Adams um, has has started sort of pushing on that pushing Scott Adams that. has suddenly become a meme that I've seen posted on many Twitter posts yeah so so you know we are, we are talking about that and look as significant as black on white violence is it does pale into significance compared to black on black violence that is a real um, epidemic in our city and nobody wants to talk about it you know we're just all supposed to shut up about it so um so Sasha you know you get this story and I don't know when someone will next think to uh, to cover this situation and I hope that you make a a full recovery uh, and and when you wake up that you get to live a um a normal life and possibly renounce your previous views and confront the main problem but I suspect that that's not going to happen uh unfortunately I suspect that you're going to be forgotten because the people that did this to you um do not look like the sort of people that you were warning us about um, and I'm and, and overall, Sasha, I'm sorry that um, you know we're part of a culture that isn't brave enough to confront these hard conversations. Um, and in the end, it's 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 not for the reasons that you thought. Um, although when you said um, no justice, no peace, it turned out that 
that is exactly what's happened here. There has been no justice and you have no peace now. I want to give the final word on this topic to, um, to Sasha herself. And I'm going to do that via the medium of a rather good YouTube channel that I found, um, House of uh, Macora. That's a small channel. It's just got 321 subscribers. And uh, that produced um, several months back a documentary that inspired my thinking around this, which was the it's a three-part documentary, The Sad Case of Sasha Johnson. So that's worth checking out if you want to. I'm just going to pull out one small section from that um, from that uh, video, which is Sasha's own perspective on um, people who fall victim to crimes in their in their um, in the groups that they that they advocate for. So, final word to Sasha here. A couple of months before the attack, Sasha did an interview with a YouTuber, and at some point, the interviewer talked about a black man who had a very positive opinion on the police, but later ended up being killed by the same police he was defending. And what Sasha said is very interesting because some people feel the same way about her attack. Have you seen the case of Jonathan Price here in America? Have you seen that case? No, I haven't. I've been hearing about it. Well, well, you know, what, what ended up happening to, to this, you know, black man is that he was killed by the police recently. Well, a few months ago, when we were starting to turn up for George Floyd over here, you know, he was one of the same black people that was saying, what y'all doing out there? Are you making me sick and making everything about race? Then he started talking about some white folks raised him and fed him a lot of food and he had these addiction to their you know, these white females, all this stuff. He's talking about how great the police were, and the same police that he thought they were so great, killers behind. Just earlier this month, now I don't see nobody lose their life, but see, that's what we're dealing with. Out he needed to go. You say what? He needed to go. He needed the same the same what people he worshipped, the same people he wants his merits from. They're, they're the same people who took him out. It showed him in the end who, who they are. So it took him to that point to see who they are. That's why we're saying to our brothers and sisters, wake up now. Okay, some comments. Um, I I. Don't think I need to add anything to that. That nothing, clip speaks for itself. Add, nothing you can add to that. No, that's um, that's Sasha's own view on the subject. So uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that with her. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the premium articles, this one on Cambridge's colossal lack of judgment and Eaton's woke mess, with an audio track for silver and gold tier listeners, of course. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, it's on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.